So it seems today that as Christians, we sometimes run the risk of snuggling into a casual, benign relationship with Jesus and God the Father. How is it that Mary and Joseph, as first century Jews, understood the meaning of a proper relationship with God? Would this have changed when Christ mm -hmm. came? Thank you. And this is from Pamela via Facebook. Thank you, Pamela. Yeah, I would say that, you know, uh, well, first of all, you know, it's a little difficult for me to get into the mind and heart of Mary and Joseph. Uh, and I'm just going to do this by way of implication. Um, that's a good question. Um, and I'm going to think, OK, Mary is, you know, a good Old Testament uh, covenant woman who has an extraordinary and I'm going to call it mystical relationship with God. I think she is an extraordinarily humble, extraordinarily holy woman who does have a mystical relationship with God and already recognizes, uh, you know, the, the, uh, she recognizes mystically the unconditional love of God in her heart. I can't believe for a second that Mary did not have the same mystical relationship with God that St. Teresa of Avila had or St. Therese of Lisieux had or any one of the other mystical saints uh, that, that uh, you, know, um, you know, in the Catholic Church. She, she had, uh, to me, you know, uh, way beyond Julian of Norwich and, and Teresa of Avila, etc. So just bearing that in mind, I do think she has uh, a recognition of the unconditional love of God, whereas, you know, St. Teresa of mm -hmm. Avila says, you know, when you just even look at it, you know, you're in ecstasy. You know, when you just feel his presence in that way, you are in ecstasy. So she kind of knows. Now, do I think Joseph knows in the same way that Mary knows? No, I don't think he does. But I do think that Joseph knows to trust Mary. I think he knows this woman is special. I think he not only trusts, um, you know, her, um, uh, you know, her immacul uh, her uh, conception of Jesus as 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 being from the divine, from God Himself, but I think he trusts what she's saying about God. So I do think that, in 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 a sense, you can say yes. Mary and Joseph have that sense or awareness of God's unconditional love, in in a way that would be beyond what I would call the Old Testament uh, or the Old Covenant view. Uh, of God's love. So, so that's the first mm -hmm. thing. And, and uh, the, <clears throat> you know, the, the fact that she's born w without original sin is going to help her appropriate that uh, as well. But the second uh, part of your question, you know, about snuggling, or actually the first part of your question, mm -hmm. right. answered your second part first, the, of snuggling up to, you know, um, you know God and, and not having a realistic notion uh, about what's going on in the world. You know, there is always that danger that if you talk about the unconditional love of God, mm -hmm. that people will get the impression that it really doesn't matter what I do. Right. And, and of course, Jesus never Never said mm -hmm. that. Jesus has two points that he's making side by side. The first one is God is unconditional love. He is going to uh, uh, forgive you uh, the minute you come back to him, even if you come back to him out of fear and inconvenience very, very imperfectly. He's still going to forgive you. He's still going to try and bring you to salvation. There's nothing that's going to stand in the way. But then simultaneous with that, side by side with that, Jesus is saying, you are free. And as a free person, you really have to watch yourself. And along with your freedom, know this, there is evil. And Jesus talks about the devil being present. He's got this prolific ministry of exorcism. There's no question, right, that the, the demons are confronting him. Jesus already says, I'm in a battle with Satan, right? I've seen him fall like lightning from the heavens, right? He says, um, you know, at the end, right, he's, he's going to defeat Satan definitively in the unconditionally loving, self-sacrificial act on the cross. However, he's around, he's active, and he doesn't have your best interests in mind. And what does the devil want to do to you? 
He wants to deceive you and to tempt you into thinking that you can violate God's law. You can violate uh, Jesus' interpretation of love. That you don't have to, don't worry about forgiveness. Don't worry about humility. Way over exaggerated, <laughs> right? And don't worry about mercy and compassion. Wait, it's way over exaggerated. I'm telling you right now, you're going to be much happier. Just be an egocentric, narcissistic, domineering right you know pretty much selfish self-worshipping person and you're going to really be happy trust me on this now of course what jesus is saying is mark my words no snuggling here right there's this is real world evil this is real world darkness there's a real world cosmic struggle between good and evil and you know but god is unconditionally loving and, you know, you have to take the two things side by side. What you don't want to do is exaggerate one of those poles, right? Because God's love is unconditional, and that's not going to be mitigated by the fact that there's evil out there. And there's real mm -hmm. life evil and darkness that you can succumb to in your freedom. But that is not mitigated by God's unconditional love, except to say you can come back to Him, right? So you can always come back to Him if you, if you uh, uh, get out of hand. So, the, uh, you know, uh, the main thing, though, is, yes, you've got these two poles. They're there, and, and we, you know, it's almost dialectical, but that's Jesus. And you don't do a lot of snuggling when you're in a cosmic struggle between good and evil. And not just for yourself, by the way, uh, but certainly for yourself, you know, but also for the whole world. The cosmic right. struggle, what you do affects people in the whole world. And Jesus says this very, very clearly, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, this is, this is a battle out there. You know, we're not just fighting flesh and blood. We're, we're fighting a, a real evil out there. And the evil, you know, there's still that evil within ourselves from original sin that makes us want to succumb to all those temptations of the devil. And we're going to need God's unconditionally loving forgiveness and his unconditional mercy in order to, to redeem us and to save us and to bring us into the heavenly kingdom.